Before this video begins, I would like to give a quick thank you to my Asbantium level patrons Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. We're only a few months away from Doctor Who's ambitious return to TV after a whole year away. Obviously, all the headlines are dominated by the huge returns of David Tennant and Catherine Tate, the iconic duo who made Series 4 one of the most popular series of the show's entire history. But what seems to be getting less attention are the two returning villains for the 60th anniversary specials. Well, actually one returning and one heavily rumoured return. So, I thought today I would take the time to tell you everything you need to know about Beep the Meep and the Celestial your toy maker ahead of their appearances in the trilogy of specials so that you know what to expect and understand the doctor's history of them now that he's set to do battle with them once again so as always beware of spoilers for the following stories because this is everything you need to know about doctor who's newest villains Naturally, let's start with the confirmed villain, Beep the Meep, who made his first appearance in the comic story Doctor Who and the Star Beast. Beep was the leader of the Meeps, who are a cute yet dangerous alien race from the Wrath Galaxy. This galaxy is on the other side of the universe from our own, and it's policed by the relentless Wrath Warriors. They're kind of like Jadoon, but genetically engineered from the five strongest species in the Wrath Galaxy. The Star Council basically threw all these species into a blender, and the Wrath Warriors were the result. These warriors were created specifically to deal with the Meeps and combat them. You see, the Meep were very advanced and peaceful to the extent people were actually jealous of their happiness, but everything changed when their homeworld's orbit began to shift towards the Black Sun, a star in their galaxy. This once peaceful race soon became a brutal warring faction under the banner of the Black Sun. Using their neutron drive star cruisers, they could travel huge distances to conquer the galaxy, killing people with laser pistols and using Black Sun radiation to create mindless slave drones. The war between the Meeps and the Wrath Warriors raged throughout the Wrath Galaxy until the Battle of Yaras, where the Wrath Warriors destroyed the Meeps Armada, ending the war and wiping out most, if not all, Meeps, with the exception of Beep, who crash landed on Earth in 1980. Beep crashed in Blackcastle, a small town in Yorkshire, England, because of course it's in England. Here he was found by Sharon Davis and Fudge Higgins, who thought Beep was cute and harmless, so hid him from the pursuing Wrath Warriors. However, Beep was actually using his ship's Black Sun radiation to control the people of Blackcastle to repair his ship in order for him to escape Earth. Despite initially helping Sharon and Fudge with the little alien critter, the fourth Doctor realises that the Wrath Warriors are actually the good guys, so he helps them catch Beep and lock him away in a top security prison for 3,000 years. Yeah, that's a pretty long time. I guess that's what happens when you're a sadistic and maniacal dictator leading an alien conquest. But Beep is a trickster, a very clever villain who can easily manipulate people. So he got parole after just 15 years, returning to Black Castle where he had hidden a spare Black Star Drive, although he was pretty quickly stopped once again and locked into a Lassie film. Oh, he's a good dog. You catch that little fluffy monster. Good girl. But Doctor Who villains are nothing if not persistent. A copy of the film was kept in the Wrath Institute where Beep convinced a girl to release him. I guess you can't say no to that cute little face. This led Beep to go to Earth and manipulate the TV schedules in order to create his own shows to take control of people's minds in classic Beep the Meat fashion. The first of these was Audience Shares, a reality TV series where 10 contestants would be locked in a studio and do tasks centering around presenting. Beep filled it with subliminal messaging and after the final episode hit air another show called Beep and Friends, which was basically Don't Hug Me I'm Scared but with murdery subliminal messages. I think I'll stick with the Wiggles, thanks. This reality TV show plot was foiled by the Sixth Doctor, forcing Beep back out on the run from Galactic Police. He ended up being dragged into a parallel universe where he wound up in the BBC Television Centre and tried to use raw Black Star energy to enslave humanity and the galaxy as a whole. Because, you know, play the hits. He caught the Eighth Doctor, who had also been sucked into the parallel universe, although actor Tom Baker distracted Beep so Eight's companion Izzy could stop the villain and Beep was dragged away to a zoo, where I guess he still lingers to this day. Of course, given that the Star Beast is having a seemingly faithful adaptation in the 60th anniversary special of the same name, all of this won't have happened in the TV universe, like a lot of expanded media adventures. But Doctor Who has no set canon after all, so it doesn't matter if these things happened or not in the universe of the TV show itself. They're still interesting adventures and give a great insight into the kind of villain and scheming character Beep the Meep is. He's sadistic and outright seeks to destroy other cute things because he hates them so much. Of course, he's aware of how cute he himself is, so always takes advantage 
advantage of it when he wants to manipulate people for all his schemes. I fully expect this element of his character to be at the forefront of his characterization in the Star Beast TV version. Since we can already see how the effects team have maxed out that cuteness slider. I mean, come on, like I said, how can you not just cave into those eyes? Now, our next villain is much more nuanced and developed, although he's not yet actually confirmed to be in the specials yet. Although, come on, everyone pretty much knows already. Yes, it's all but confirmed that the other main villain of the specials is the Celestial Toymaker. The Toymaker is a transcendental being made from the fabric of time itself, specifically a guardian of time, who are essentially gods, six masters of rarity who predate the Time Lords and our own universe entirely. There's obviously the White Guardian and the Black Guardian, but the Toymaker is often considered the crystal guardian of dreams, granting him all sorts of reality bending powers to create and destroy. However, according to the audio of the Nightmare Fair, the toy maker got bored of all this creation and destruction throughout thousands of millennia. This led him to find entertainment in games, creating the Celestial Toy Room, a universe of his own where he could turn individual people into his personal playthings. He would pluck people from throughout human history and challenge them to games, ranging from simple card games to elaborate challenges. Either way, if a player died or lost the game, the toy maker would gain control over their life and their personality. If they cheated, they would become an exhibit in the toy room. However, the toy maker did claim to be fair, because if you defeated him fairly and evenly, he would let you go free. So I guess it's like a sci-fi squid game of sorts if you think about it. The first encounter between the toy maker and the Doctor actually came when the Doctor was still just a youth at the Academy on Gallifrey. The book Divided Loyalty sees the Doctor and his two friends Ran and Millennia travel to the toy room to investigate legends of the mysterious toy maker, only for the villain to possess Ran and turn Millennia into one of his toys. The Doctor manages to escape, although without his friends. As a result, the Doctor was expelled from the Academy, and it was only in his fifth incarnation that he finally destroyed the toy maker's realm and freed his old friends into death. It's never really been confirmed, but it's highly likely that the toy maker was still using Rallon's body when he and the first Doctor met in the story, The Celestial Toy Maker. This is, of course, the toy maker's first and only TV appearance to date, with the villain forcing the Doctor, Stephen and Dodo to play his unfair games in order to leave with the TARDIS. However, even though the protagonist won the games fairly, the toy maker had rigged things so that the entire toy room would disappear at the exact moment of victory, not allowing the Doctor or his companions to actually escape upon victory. Despite this, the Doctor managed to outwit the Crystal Guardian to escape and leave the toy room in chaos. Later on, the toy room became old and started breaking down around the toy maker, so he tried to steal the TARDIS to contain it, although the 12th Doctor tricked him yet again and left him with the ejected Zero Room, where the toy maker could float through the universe with the toy room safely contained. However, at some point after this, the toy maker travelled to 1980s Blackpool, where he used Space Mountain as his base to manufacture killer video games. Yeah, those damn video games always trying to kill the youths. Those boomer politicians were right all along. These games would feed on the souls of the losing players in order to create creatures to take over the world. But naturally, the Doctor once again stopped him and trapped him inside a force field. And I presume the toy maker was left shaking his fists like some sort of Saturday morning cartoon villain. Oh, get you next time, Doctor, you menace. He then had run-ins with the 7th and 8th Doctors, first trapping 8 in a replica of Stockbridge Village before being trapped there himself. Yeah, that seems like a trend here, doesn't it? In terms of the 7th Doctor, fellow godlike figure Fenric stirred the toy maker up and drove him to trap the Doctor, Ace and Hex in an elaborate doll-based scheme, only to be himself trapped again. But most interestingly of the toy maker's expanded media adventures, Solitaire sees the villain turn the 8th Doctor into a puppet and Charlie captured in the toy shop. Huh. That's familiar. Indeed, the Celestial Toy Maker has a toy shop, which is the only part of his personal realm that's actually connected to him specifically. The toy room as a whole can be destroyed, but the shop itself can only be destroyed when the toy maker himself dies. It also has infinite loop rules, with anyone who tries to leave immediately walking back into the shop, unable to escape because it exists in a void. The reason I bring up this toy shop is because we see what seems to be exactly that in the trailer for the 60th anniversary specials, serving as a strong in indicated that the toy maker has finally found a new body and is hatching another plan to take the doctor down. Personally, I don't think it will be THE toy shop, but it's still very likely that the toy maker is the mysterious villain played by Neil Patrick Harris, using creepy puppets to manipulate people and control their minds. It's also possible that the whole trilogy of episodes 
might be some elaborate construction within the toy room, designed to capitalise on the Doctor's guilt and memories to trap him in this world. After all, that's what the toy maker likes to do. He sees people as toys to be used however he sees fit, and we already know how much history he has with the Doctor, so it makes perfect sense for him to target the Time Lord once again. There's a lot of potential for a modern take on this character in the TV universe, especially because of all the lore about his mysterious origins as the Crystal Guardian, with his sister Hecuba, the flirtatious yet sadistic Queen of Time, who gets great enjoyment in the fear and pain of her victims. Oh, and she also forced the Doctor to dance with her. Yeah, that once again sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? Maybe the toy maker has learned a trick or two from his sister in all of those years. The older beings of the universe, like the Guardians of Time, are absolutely fascinating parts of the Doctor Who world, and I'll definitely be making a video about them at some point. So if the toy maker is the villain of the giggle, I'm sure we'll get lots of great new lore about this enigmatic and powerful figure. The Doctor Who universe is huge and has all sorts of interesting monsters and villains. I mean hell, just look at the two I've talked about today. In one episode, we're going to have a cute manipulative furry little war criminal, and in another, we're seemingly set for the huge return of an ancient reality pending god able to create entire different dimensions with his fingertips. Both Beep the Meep and the Celestial Toymaker are fantastically wonderful adversaries, and I'm really excited to see how they translate to the modern era of the show on TV. There's one debut and one return with god knows what in the middle, since we still know nothing about Wild Blue Yonder. I do wonder how much lore they're going to keep for these two characters? Will the Star Beast acknowledge the Doctor's past with Beep and how the story is so familiar to him? Or will it be a completely clean slate where the TV Star Beast essentially replaces the comic Star Beast, meaning all those future stories no longer apply to this TV Beep the Meep? The same goes for the Celestial Toymaker, since it's been so long since his last TV appearance that we have no idea how many of those expanded media stories will remain in canon. Like, will the show treat this as the first encounter between the Doctor and the Toymaker since that classic Who story? Or will Russell T Davis slip in a line or two to legitimise all those audios and stuff as having actually happened in the TV universe? It's a complicated thing to tiptoe around, something the show always has to deal with when it comes to reusing villains or entire storylines. On one hand, you don't want to throw away all those existing stories, but on the other, you don't want to dump too much baggage on the viewer. Either way, Beep and the Toymaker are such interesting villains that I fully trust Davis to write them exceptionally and make them very compelling antagonists in their own distinct ways. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot about Doctor Who's upcoming villains, even if almost nothing I mentioned today actually gets referenced or acknowledged in the actual episodes. At least you know some obscure trivia for all those Doctor Who themed pub quizzes you're definitely going to. And, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for probably another lore based video, because I'm on a roll. Goodbye. And an extra special thank you to my Bantam level patrons Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson, my Diamond level patron Tom Hibbert, my Platinum level patrons Maximilian Foreman and Nick's Games, and all my Gold level patrons Boots, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Francois Nakane Line Vortex, Herner Verzog, and Thomas R. Thank you so much for your support.